Sup Tunes, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, not too long ago, you Tunes may remember that I did a video that I'll link below on using fasting or intermittent fasting as a stimulant for hair growth, and the key concept in that video was a process called autophagy. So, to give a quick recap on what autophagy is, well, it's basically the cell's cleanup crew. In order for cells to grow, there has to be a mechanism in order to remove old and damaged cell components, and autophagy is that process, as you can see in this image right here. Loss of autophagy occurs with aging, so there is a lot of interest in stimulating autophagy as an anti-aging technique. Autophagy also turns out to be very important for hair growth. During the antigen growth phase, there is an increase in autophagy, while during the catagen phase, which is when the antigen growth phase transitions into the telogen resting phase, there is a decrease in autophagy. Not only that, there is evidence that the impairment of autophagy is one of the processes that occurs in androgenic alopecia, which causes the shortening of the antigen growth phase and the actual miniaturization of the hair follicles. One of the things that stimulates autophagy is fasting, and that was the main topic of my previous video on autophagy. In that video, I briefly mentioned that there were other stimulants of autophagy, including certain drugs. Well. I found out after publishing that video that there is a lot of interest in using drugs in order to stimulate autophagy, and that might be because drugs are easier to use compared to fasting, which requires a significant amount of self-control. One drug in particular, rapamycin, has been mentioned a lot in the comments section. So what's the deal with this drug rapamycin? Does it work? What does the research show? Well. It sounds like an antibiotic, like erythromycin, and it's actually related to antibiotics chemically, but it's actually a drug used for the suppression of the immune system. So it's given to people who have to have an organ transplant, for example. That was interesting to me especially, though, because I've discussed another immunosuppressive drug called cyclosporine, which when applied topically may be the most powerful hair growth stimulant ever studied. Sadly, due to a very unfair study design, topical cyclosporine was abandoned, but that's another story and I'll link the video where I talk about that below. Despite rapamycin's similarities to cyclosporine though, cyclosporine works to grow hair by a completely different mechanism, not by stimulating autophagy at all. Rapamycin, on the other hand, does stimulate autophagy, and so it is being investigated as an anti-aging drug. But what we're interested here at Hair Cafe is hair growth specifically. Is rapamycin potentially a hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, or is it even something that could halt or possibly reverse hair miniaturization from androgenic alopecia like finasteride or dutasteride? Maybe it's even better than those drugs. Well, Chooms, autophagy is really a new front in the war on hair loss, so the data is preliminary. Preliminary data is often from animal studies, and that's what we have at this point at least. But the data, despite being preliminary, nevertheless looks encouraging, at least encouraging enough to warrant mention. First of all, in a mouse study from 2019 that I mentioned in the previous video on autophagy, rapamycin was applied topically to the skin of shaved mice and compared to control mice. After 37 days of treatment with topical rapamycin, there is a marked regrowth of hair as you can see in this figure right here. This looks very good, but the concentration of rapamycin was found to be critical for the success of the drug. The concentration used in this graph was a concentration of 1.6 micromolar. When the investigators tried 10 times that concentration, namely 16 micromolar, they found that this concentration, quote, resulted in hair loss and open wounds, unquote. So until recently, that was the only study on rapamycin and hair growth, but but just last year, another study was published. This study is titled, quote, Promotion of Hair Regrowth by Transdermal Dissolvable Microneedles Loaded with Rapamycin and Epigallocatechin Nanoparticles, unquote. And it's from China. Now, one thing I have found that is a bit annoying about a lot of studies from China is they don't seem to be able to test just one medication alone. The researchers in China seem to like to add in some drug derived from traditional Chinese medicine, and that's what epigallocatechin supposedly is. It's supposed to be an antioxidant, and it's found in green tea or something. But whatever it is, it probably is only useful as a placebo, just like like 99% of everything else in traditional Chinese medicine. Anyways, rapamycin itself is a naturally occurring substance that is produced by a bacteria, so I'm not sure why they decided to add these two drugs together, but maybe there's some law in China that you have to test a traditional Chinese remedy when doing research, I don't know. I'm just glad they're not using something that is contributing to the extinction of wildlife like rhino horn, bear bile, pangolin scales, or any of the other repugnant, diabolically cruel shit used in traditional Chinese medicine. In any case, despite the fact that just giving rapamycin topically seemed to 
to work well in the previous study I mentioned, in this more recent study, the investigators were determined to develop a system that would deliver the drug more effectively than just brushing it on the hair. They state that what's called the stratum corneum, the very top layer of the skin consisting of dead cells, is a major barrier to delivery of topical drugs. Poking holes in this layer is what microneedling does, and that is probably how it works to improve the absorption and effectiveness of minoxidil. If you're interested in microneedling, I have several videos on that subject that I'll link below, but fair warning, I do think microneedling is overrated, so if you are a microneedling enthusiast, you may find the videos a bit triggering. Anyways, these investigators developed a microneedling system made of polyvinyl pyrolidone, which dissolves rapidly. They found a way to fill the microneedles with both rapamycin and epigallocatechin nanoparticles, and then applied this microneedling system to the backs of shaved mice. The investigators tested that the microneedles actually work to produce a nice little hole in the skin, which you can see here. They found that the needles dissolved extremely rapidly, in only 60 seconds in fact, thus releasing the drugs very quickly as you can see in these electron microscope pictures of a needle dissolving. The investigators then looked at various doses of rapamycin and found just like in the previous study I went over, there was an optimal dose of rapamycin and higher doses caused worsening of hair growth as you can see in this figure right here. They found that a dose of about one microgram was ideal. They then tested which was better, topical delivery or delivery via the microneedles and whether adding epigallocatechin made any difference at all. Well, the results are all summed up in this figure you can see here. We're looking at hair shaft length over 15 days. Looking at the results at 15 days, the bottom light green line is the control group that showed no growth. The yellow and green lines that are nearly superimposed are epigallocatechin given either topically or via microneedles. The purple line is topical rapamycin. The blue line above that is rapamycin delivered via microneedles. And the winner is the red line at the top, which is a combination of rapamycin and epigallocatechin given via via microneedles. So it must have been the epigallocatechin that caused it. No, just kidding. My actual analysis is that rapamycin in general was more powerful than epigallocatechin, and it looks like the microneedles did help with the delivery of the drugs. Whether microneedling would help with the effectiveness in humans is unknown at this point. In fact, we don't even have a study showing that rapamycin promotes human hair growth yet at all. Now, Rapamycin is off patent, but before anyone goes and starts drenching their hair with this rapamycin stuff, remember the mouse study showed that too much can actually cause hair loss. We have no idea what dose works in human beings, or even if it works at all in human beings. Remember, this is all really new research at this point, and I sincerely hope I can make a follow-up video to this one day that involves human research. I would definitely keep my eyes on this one, Shooms. Clearly we need more data, but I do think that autophagy stimulating drugs will turn out to be a useful growth stimulant for us hair loss sufferers, and there's reason to think that they might work to reverse miniaturization and androgenic alopecia. Sometimes it is very frustrating to me how in the hair loss community we hear so many people talk about obsolete theories and utter nonsense like scalp tension and broccoli, whereas genuinely promising treatments like autophagy stimulating drugs often go unnoticed. But hopefully my video will generate at least some interest in the subject, and researchers will see an incentive to follow up with stronger research data, hopefully involving human beings. Okay, homies, thank you for watching, and sorry uploads have been a bit slow as of late, but I'll be back with more content soon, though, so I'll see you guys next time. God bless.